You may be seated. Glory to God. Thank you, music ministry. You are awesome. Praise God. Merry Christmas once again. Hope you had an excellent Christmas celebration. It was important that you did. And if you are celebrating in quarantine, Merry Christmas too. Regardless of where you are, Christmas is still merry. You can make it as merry as you can. Remember Paul and Silas, they were in quarantine. But they made their jail cell a merry place. Bible said they prayed and they sang. And the glory of God came down. So it doesn't matter where you are today, whether you are in your couch. Hmm? Your couch. If you are, okay, well, it's not only being in the couch, but that's where you are in the couch. If you are in the couch close to where we are worshiping, then you have no business in your couch. But if you are in the couch somewhere very, very far away, then that's okay. You know, you can still worship God there. Everywhere can be a place of worship. Hallelujah. Can turn your home into a place of worship. Can turn your car into a place of worship. Can turn anywhere into a place of worship. And make the egg, the glory of God to be evident even there. So once again, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Tell someone around you, Merry Christmas. I know you are not wearing Santa's hat. But Merry Christmas. Christmas is a celebration of Christ and what Christ did for us, his excellence in our lives. I, I was telling you about it. that was on, on Wednesday, right? Yes. Told you about the excellence of Christ in our lives. How Christ is a demonstration of excellence. And our man of God also was wonderful. Pastor was amazing. In fact, when pastor stepped out, I just, wow, I was like, mm, mwah, mwah, mwah. can I just get out of Australia? I just go <laughs> and just go there. Pastor taught marvelously, and I learned a lot from what pastor said. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tell someone you are excellent in Christ. Yes. Excellent in Christ. There were a few scriptures pastor brought out, and I would like to go through those scriptures with you. They also showcase excellence. Those scriptures also showcase excellence. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 19. Glory to God. Colossians 1 verse 19. Amazing. Hmm. Didn't you see your right hand? Okay. Glory to God. His right hand is full of power. Hallelujah. Colossians 1 verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in Christ Jesus should all fullness dwell. And Pastor showed us this scripture. That word fullness there is the interpretation of the Greek word pleroma. And pleroma talks about completeness. So it pleased the Father that in Christ should all completeness dwell. The totality of divinity was in Christ Jesus, is in Christ Jesus. So Jesus was the expression. That's why I said, if you have seen me, you have seen who? The Father. Because he is the revelation of the Father. The Father dwells in Christ Jesus. And so the totality of divinity is in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit is in Christ Jesus. The Father is in Christ Jesus. And of course, Jesus is the Son. And so he said, I and my Father, we are what? We are one. So all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus bodily. Give me Colossians chapter 2. So Pleroma. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 9. All fullness all completeness. It's like saying the maximum, Pastor taught us many years back, the maximum load of something can have the maximum dose of something. Not talking about those of vaccines, talking about those of God. 
<laughs> Maximum load of God. The totality, the fullness of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 9. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So Jesus, and that's why Pastor told us, said Jesus is God in human flesh. God in human flesh. That's what it means by the Son of God. Son of God is not just talking about um, one who was born of, but he's talking about the very fleshy representation of God. The very fleshy manifestation of God. So when Jesus walked on the earth, it was God that was walking on the earth. In him dwells the fullness. And that's again the Greek word pleroma. The fullness, the completeness of the Godhead bodily dwells in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Then verse 10. Take me to verse 10 of that same scripture. Then he says, and you are what? Complete in him. Which is the head of all principality and power. And that word again, complete, is a variant of that word pleroma. The word used there for complete is plero. Plero, which is a variant of that word pleroma. So he's also talking about, so you can read that scripture and say, you are full in Christ Jesus. Because he uses the first one, you are of his fullness. So you are full in Christ Jesus, which is the head of all principalities and powers. That means you have the maximum dose. No wonder he said he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. You have the maximum dose of divinity. Amen. When you are in Christ Jesus, you are complete in him. So everything that is required for your success on this earth, everything that is required for your life to be pleasing and pleasant to God, you have it when you came into Christ Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. You are complete in him. You have the maximum dose of divinity. And of course, he's the head of all principality and powers. So plero, your completeness is when you come to Christ Jesus. Outside Christ, there is no completeness. And that's why a man cannot find rest until he finds rest in Christ. Amen. You find those in the world, they look for this, they look for this rest. They, they, maybe the rest might be in women, maybe the rest might be in men, maybe it might be in the booze, maybe it might be in the money, maybe it might be in this, in that, in that. You know, they're running about looking for completeness. But for those of us who have come to Christ, we are complete. Amen. That's why it doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter what happens around us. We are just, we are, <laughs> we are just rocking life 24 7. Lege Bosagaya. We've been rocking since 2020 till now. We are still rocking. We haven't changed. Our mode of oppression has not altered even one little bit. We are, <laughs> we are still just moving forward. Kinging in life. Hallelujah. They which receive abundance of grace, carries and of the gift of righteousness, they reign in life. We'll be reigning, we are still reigning, we'll still be reigning. Hallelujah. We reign into 22. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why we are different. We are different. Very different. The Christian is different. We, we live a different life. It's a life of a king. Hallelujah. Regardless of the season. No Barosha Mandi. So for some, Christmas is the time for them to have some happiness, after which they are busy again throughout the whole life. No, for us, we have been busy 24-7, but we are still happy 24-7. John chapter 1, from verse 14. Glory to God. <laughs> still on completeness. John chapter 1, from verse 14. Bible talks about Jesus. So it says, and the word was made flesh. That's Jesus. For you find in verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 14, then it tells us, and that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Talking about Jesus. Then it says, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, Arabo Shakaya, full of grace, full of caris and truth. Then, verse 15, 
It tells us, And John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I speak. That's about Jesus. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. Then verse 16. He then tells us, And of his fullness. <laughs> and of his completeness have all we received. Same word again, Plero. Of his fullness have all we received. We have received his fullness. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your hands and just say, I have received his fullness. And of his fullness have all we received. And then he tells us, we have received, as a result of that fullness, we have received grace heaped upon grace. All the grace we require, Lege Bozagaya, for our lives we have received. We have not just received just a level of grace. You know, we have received a, a karoshke, a, a, a mounted, that is you, you, you load the grace. Because that's why he's talking about the maximum load. The maximum load. So you, you've topped the grace, then you've added extra on top of it. I remember back in Africa, oh, those days... Ah, when we're about to go back to school, there used to be this delicacy. If you didn't have it, mm. how many of you know Gary? How many of you know Gary? Okay, majority do. Some of you don't know Gary. I wonder where you grew up in this part of, in the part of the world. You know, <laughs> it was this thing we called Gary. Ah, Gary Flex. Thank you. Ah. That Gary was used to make cake, it was used to make a bite, it was used to drink, you could do, you could, all types of things. So everybody that went to boarding house or to university, they had to go with Gary. So when we were going, when, when they wanted to buy the Gary for us or when we were taking the Gary from home, maybe we might be told that you are going to measure, your own is one bucket. So we know, okay, the bag is here, we are measuring that one bucket. So what do we do? We bring the Gary... We put it inside the bucket, then we press it down <laughs> to make sure there's no space in between. And after we have finished pressing it down, because it's one bucket we need to take. So we still carry the gary and we pour it on top of it until it has become a big mound all around the place. What were we looking for? We were looking for the maximum load of gary. <laughs> <laughs> Now the Bible says you have received the same way we used to press it down. Oh, label. No wonder I said a good measure. Press down, shaking together. Then you add more and run it over. So, amen. Give unto your bosom. 2022, I see many sweet things happening. Many sweet things. Because you have received grace heaped upon grace. Grace attracts favor. Grace attracts success. Grace attracts prosperity. When you are full of grace, it doesn't matter where people place you. Doesn't matter what anybody says about you. Doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. Because you have grace, charis. That's where they got the word charisma from. You know, you find there are some people, they call them charismatic. You know, they, 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 concerning the person's character, the person is charismatic. That means anywhere the person goes, the person is likable. Put the person as a cleaner, it's a likable cleaner. Take the person and put the person in an office, a likable of official. Put the person in government, a likable politician. Put the person as a pastor, a likable pastor. Karo Shagaya. A likable deacon, a likable sister, a likable brother. Which one are you? Ask your neighbor, are you a likable person? <laughs> likable. Kaya Barabahaya. It's grace that is at work in you. That's what makes you to be likable. <laughs> Put you anywhere, any country of the world, you are a success because you've got grace. Yeah. Grace in you. I remember the later bishop said, if you take a lizard from one country to another, it will still remain a lizard. Nothing will change. Even if you give the lizard burger to eat, it will become a big fat lizard. <laughs> but if you take a man that is full of grace to another place, Karo Shahaya, the person will only be full of grace. I carried my grace to Australia. Hallelujah. I didn't get grace here. I got my grace from the kingdom of heaven. I've carried it here. No matter where I am, I'm full of grace. Full of grace. We are different. We are different. Oh, Rabba Sege Bosahaya. 
So you know, this we have in Christ. This is one of the things we celebrate in Christ. This is one of the reasons why we celebrate Christ in us, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, 27, Christ in us. This is the mystery. Maybe give it to me, Colossians 1. Give it to me from verse 26 into verse 27. talks about the mystery that was hidden from all ages, from all generations. Even the mystery, verse 26, which has been hid from ages and from generations. But now it's made manifest to his saints. It was a mystery. Many people couldn't understand it from generation to generation. No wonder the Bible says the, the earnest manifest, the earnest expectation of the creature eagerly awaits the revealing of the sons of God. Why? Because the sons of God have been difficult to find. You know, it's difficult to see people that talk like this. You know, most people will talk, you know, in the midst of a pandemic, we are all hiding. No, we are not hiding. In the midst of a pandemic, we are showcasing his glory. Amen. We are shining. We are thriving in the midst of a pandemic. Amen. That's us. No, there are some churches now, everybody's masked up and all the rest. Not us. We release the glory of God. When we breathe out, Kero Sahaya, we breathe the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what we breathe. Bible tells us Jesus blew on his disciples and said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus did. So when the air that comes out from us goes anywhere, uh, no one, the Bible says the Holy Ghost is, uh, the word used for the Holy Ghost in the Greek is called pneuma, which means air. Air. So every time we breathe in our houses, you don't have to start running away from your wife or your husband and say, oh, mm. No, breathe, 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 breathe. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> breathe. You breathe. In fact, the more the, more the person is running, the more you go, mm. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> grace heaped upon grace. I got the life of God in me. We have this in Christ Jesus. So you are excellent. You are complete in Christ Jesus. You're not looking for something to make you complete. No, that's what the world doesn't understand. That's why, you know, if, if the person is not first jab, second jab, third jab, don't worry. Fourth one is already in Israel. In Israel. As we speak right now, they are doing number four. By the time the Australia has gotten to number four, they will move to number five. You know, because the nation that has rejected God moves ahead of the rest in terms of evil. So go to number five. Before you know it, number six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. A medical doctor asked us last week as we were chatting, uh, okay, it was my wife that was doing the chatting and said, when will it end? No. She said, <laughs> a medical doctor asking, when will it end? So, so when will this whole thing end? Because she knows that they are, the more, the more, the, they thought it was going to be number one only. Then it moved to two, three, four. Before you know it, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Pastor Esther said, until the mark of beast has been introduced. That's when it will end. It's not designed to end. But we have the ability to stop it by our prayers. Concerning us, we live in a, we live in a different world. In our world, those principles don't apply. We have only one principle, the principle of the glory of Christ. The principle of the glory that's in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why we use that name continuously. Into 2022, we are using that name. That's why the works of the adversary have been frustrated. All their plans brought to naught. Where they wanted to get to with this nonsense, they are unable to get there because we are still here on this earth. Imagine what they would have done if there were no Christians on this earth. Imagine what they would have done. Hitler would have just, Hitler would have been saying, wow, I didn't do anything. In fact, I didn't do anything on that earth. I was actually a saint compared to what they were going towards. And Pastor has mentioned a few names. Remember those names, because they are the real culprits behind this business. The real culprits behind the fear and the deception. That even though some men are saying, no, 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 there's nothing to be afraid of. Real doctors from the start, not today, from the start, from the very beginning, they said there's nothing to be afraid of. The real ones, the ones that have not been caught up in the deception. They said you have absolutely nothing to fear from this nonsense. But then... You know, the Bible says all their lifetime they were subject to bondage. The bondage of the fear of death. 
And so knowing fully well, Satan having known men, that once you mention death near them, <laughs> they have taken cover. Because eternal life, they have no knowledge of 